Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm Greg, I'm the owner of Edsworth Street. Um, as Edsworth Street can't go to any shows at the moment, um, I'm doing my videos on Gordon's Lane, which is my new project. So until obviously the clubs can open back up, hopefully at the end of May, um, I'm working in my uh, log cabin, as you can see here. Um, so this video is gonna be about my secret little project. Um, some people have seen the progress that I've made laying on the track and the field of yard for Gordon's Lane and then all of a sudden it's just stopped. Um, yes, uh, I've decided to do something a little bit crazy. So come and join me over by the layout and you'll be able to see what I'm going to be attempting. This is one of the little secret little projects that I've been working on. Um, I'm going to be fitting this double track road over bridge. Um, but instead of having a road underneath, I'm going to put a canal. Um, and it's going to go here. Now, it's quite ambitious because it means I've got to cut out this section. Um, and then lay this over the top. Um, so today I've been marking this out. Ready for um, this to go in place. Um, you can just about see there, I've got another, another bridge. So that's going to go in this place. Um, so this one here... Um, I'm gonna have a little bit of a, di a little bit of difference. Obviously, these buttons will be going underneath, and that one is going there, and then that will go up in between, and then that's going to be sunk down. So these will be roughly around about that high. So when that sits on top of there, that's the same height as that. It doesn't really make much difference because I can raise it up the track a little bit. Um, but we've got to get this right for that to sit into place. So this will be cut out at an angle and then we'll have a little zigzag or a little cut out for this to sit in place. So then that doesn't have much to move. Um, I've had to be a bit clever. And as you can see, I've had to cut a little bit away um, of the uh, embutments um, just so that uh, when, it, when I do make it, it sits flush against the back there and it will sit flush against there because I will be putting an edge protector onto the side of the track. Now, yes, it's going to be quite interesting. I was thinking about doing something like that and then having a, a larger road over the top, but it means they're me trying to find another one of those. Um, well, I can't really find another one of those at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to plan on doing is if I can, I may actually bring this bridge out um, a little bit, make a hill, um, exactly what I'm going to do the other end. Um, so then it just goes straight on so you don't see the width um, of the track going through. So that's my little project for tomorrow. Um, so as you can see here, I've actually fitted the panels in now. Um, ah, well, what a little bit of a, a nightmare they were. Um, they're roughly around about four and a half inches wide, the panels. Um, so the, the downside of is where I've put the um, point work, and you can just see there, um, the circuitry board doesn't actually fit quite nicely. Um, the only downside is there's not enough space to mount it flat there, or flat there so um, luckily a friend of mine managed to send in the angles um, and he cut the angles so now these look really nice they look really professional and as you can see there they have got plenty of clearance and then Tom I put the um, backing piece on there isn't going to be too much difference um, so it's done exactly the same to this one here um, so that is all lovely jubbly uh, and as you can tell I've got a new t-shirt on with uh, the uh, Gordon's Lane uh, badge on so I'm quite happy with those so I've got hoodies um, and then I've got t-shirts as well so here it is it is finally in place uh, it was a bit of a struggle to actually get this into place but I'm very pleased on how it turned out so what I'd done is I measured the top of the bridge, um, placing it where it is now, uh, and I made a cutout in the actual um, baseboard so I knew exactly where it needs to be. Then I measured where the embankments were going to be placed, 
And then it turned to cutting out and making the base and the frame. So what I've done with this is I've made it a little bit wider than the actual it needs to be. Then placed the track over the top so I knew exactly where the top part of the bridge needs to be placed. Then once I've done that I measured from the top of the embankments uh, and the top of where the track is going to be placed onto and then marked down on side of the baseboards. So that was a pretty much uh, and quite an easy um, task to do. And as you can just see on the baseboards, I've marked out the uh, um, the centre columns. Um, and obviously it is removable. Um, and obviously I've been, and you can just about see it. Um, and obviously you can see here, I have been a little bit crafty and cut away some of the embankments. So it sits flush right against the uh, back of the uh, the wall. Um, and it means it's going to be flush against the back scene. So when I do then have to um, put the uh, fascia on for the baseboards, it is quite nice and easy. So there you go. You can see what I've done there with the frame. I've sanded it down. I've made a little cutout for the main part of the bridge to sit in. So hopefully when we do take it to exhibitions, um, there's not going to be much movement at all. Um, and as you can see there, it's it is a little bit tight and it can sit there quite nicely without uh, any issues at all. Uh, I've also sanded down some of the sides just to give it that effect. Um, the next task will be to get the water in place and the embankments. Once I've done that, then I should be able to then obviously fix the um, track into place. Um, so this is going to take a little bit longer than uh, necessary. Um, to get all the track finished and laid for this part of the uh, project but I am really 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 pleased on how this has turned out um, first time I've ever done anything like this and making the baseboards um, in different places so the only downside is I've just got to make sure that I get it all level and all correct um, and obviously make it look nice and look flush, like making the hill come down and etc. and etc. So I've got quite a fair bit to do. Um, now I've just got to wait for them to be delivered. Um, and then once I've once that happens, then hopefully I should be able to put a little walkway behind the back of the bridge. Um, and then hopefully that should go up to the tunnel mouth, which you can probably just see in the right hand side um, where the, uh, the bridge is. Um, and then fingers crossed, hopefully I'll be able to start working on that sort of area. But it's been a couple of days since I've been able to do any work on the layout. Um, so I've managed to order a couple of bits. So I've got this deep pour uh, water mucky uh, from Woodland Scenics. Um, so I'm going to really look forward to doing that. Um, but I also thought, well, I've got this base to do where the bridge is going to go. So I thought I'd quickly pop down to a local B&Q, uh, as it's a Sunday now. Um, and I've got this Buckingham green that I'm going to paint on the bottom of it. Uh, I'm going to do it a bit thick, but obviously it's quick drying. So fingers crossed, hopefully, um, I'll, I'll cut it on quite nice and thick, let it dry. Uh, and then hopefully some point over the day, um, I should be able to, uh, start laying some of the water. So I'm going to do a little bit of a time lapse of me, uh, using my magic with my paintbrush. Um, and then hopefully we'll try and get some me actually doing a video as I'm pouring it. So, see you in a couple of seconds. As you can see, I've just laid the first colouring in. Um, it's quite a quite a lighter green than what I thought it was going to be. Um, so what I may actually do is I may leave that to dry first of all, um, and then I may mix up some of this and some black um, and make it a little bit darker. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it dries. Um, I'll give it a couple of hours, and then we'll see what it's like. Right, so um, roughly around about 24 hours later, as you can see, the uh, resin water has now um, gone off. It's really nice. 
I took the opportunity while the resin was setting to put some um, bushes and some um, branches and bits of uh, long grass that looks like it's coming part of the underneath the bridge. Um, and obviously what also I've done is put some polystyrene on the inside of where the holes were and the cuts out. Uh, and obviously I've built the hill which is there and obviously I've fitted one of the uh, tunnel mouths in now in place so as you can see um, it's all uh, in place now so the polystyrene and the paper mache is just dry in there and then what I'm going to be doing is fitting another hill in that side going down behind the back of the buttresses uh, and then bring it down to almost a, uh, a lower level down here uh, and then obviously I'm going to from this side here I'm going to build up and then back down again so you've got almost like a, a rolling hill this side um, and also you may have noticed that the uh, back scenes had a coat of blue um, because obviously I was going to put um, the uh, the building in I thought well if I can get the the uh, the blue done on this board um, so that's all now lovely nice and, and in place and this is obviously the deep water uh, murky stuff so I'm going to quick just show you just quickly uh, I'm not going to be doing it but I'll just show you quick quickly um, so you get um, these two bottles you get some gloves um, do wear them so you've got the deep pool mucky water and the activator you get two of these cups and you get two of these um, measuring sticks which you need to do and you get two sticks so what you do is you get yourself a bowl of really warm water um, it's got to be warm enough that you can put your hand in it and leave it for a couple of minutes then what you do is you put these two bottles which are then be full up into the bottle of water into the water in this bag leave that for roughly around about 10 to 15 minutes after that what you need to do is with this the the pour mix is just check it to see if it's just moving very slightly and you'll be able to see it on the top um you'll be able to see it down the bottom as well then you pour this in to the measurements now in the booklet that you do get in with the uh, box it tells you where to go so what i done is i went up to 180 uh, on the pour mix and then it tells me it needs 90 um for the next part um so then i went up to roughly between 240 and 270 with the uh actuator uh, and obviously then once that's done mix it around for around about five to six minutes uh, and you should notice it and try and get as much up from the side and obviously on the bottom and then all i done then was just pour it in place now what i done here is i had a bit of wood going across just to stop the water from running because otherwise it's just going to run down uh, and then all I've done is I just put a knife down the side and then just to break it off um, I did get a little bit of a crack uh, which is just there but I don't know if you can see it um, but uh, it do it looks like a wave actually it just looks like it's just going round so I really am happy how that's turned out um, I was tempted to do another slight mix over the top of it but I'm quite happy with that's all pretty much sturdy. Um, that's ready to go. Uh, and you may have even noticed I've actually put the uh, the tracks in. Um, because obviously if I was going to glue this down I needed to do the joints. So the joints are done there now. Um, so that's pretty much nice to go. Um, so what I'm going to be doing this afternoon um, is I'm going to be painting um, this once it's dried a little bit still a little bit tacky um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to paint it like a chocolate suede color or maybe like an earth color um just then it means that i can start layer putting some um fine detailing on the top um so like some scatter and things like that um so i what also i may do is i may even start building the hill down this side uh and behind the back there so i may do that this afternoon um but yeah really am pleased how that's turned out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to crack on a little bit more um and then uh, i'll see you in a couple of seconds or so and i'll show you exactly uh what else i've got up to um in the next maybe four or five hours that i'm going to be working on this um so i've got one more day off 
Um, so fingers crossed. Hopefully I should be able to get a fair bit done. But from what that's looking like now, I'm pretty happy. So as you can see, I've been quite pleased on how it's turned out. Um, I did have a one of the cheapy static grass applicators. Um, fortunately, it decided it didn't want to work anymore. So I spoke to Ollie at Wardle Road uh, and he said, go for this WWS World War Scenics, the static grass starter kit. So I bought some extra uh, flocks. I've got some summer and some spring um, in some boxes. I've got the layer uh, and obviously I've started a little bit on the layer as you can probably see there. Um, still got a fix this into place um but i want to just get all the the greenery bit done around here and obviously the, the the next edging done which i've got so i've got some of the the viaduct uh girders um and it's got an old model zone sticker on it at four pounds 75 so that just shows you how long it's been since uh, it's been in my little box of tricks um so yeah so i got the world war um scenery uh, starter kit um, absolutely fantastic so I've done a little bit on the layout already um, which you can just about see just there um, looks pretty good I'm quite happy with how it's just sticking up I don't want to be too um, too thick there um, but obviously I'm quite pleased so that's going to be my next um, thing to do is to fit the um bridging get that a nice level um and then uh, glue it and fix it into place continue doing some of the scenery uh on this board and lay the track up and across this board so i can do the joint there um and then once i've done that i can then continue start painting the rest of the back scenes blue uh, and then just basically working down as i've started this end i'm going to start this end and continue working down with the track play and ballasting um scenery and etc um just want to say a huge thank you for all your support um i know this video um is a little bit of a short one um and as you can tell I've managed to get a little haircut in this in the in this time as well um so yeah i'm really pleased on how it's uh, coming along with gordon's lane um so fingers crossed hopefully um i should be able to start doing some more wiring um and then obviously on the next video um, I'm going to actually show you how I've designed this front. Um, so when we come to the panels, um, you can see how it's going to work out. So on the next video, hopefully, um, I'll probably do that in the next couple of weeks. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something. Um, please obviously go and give uh, Ollie at Wardle Road a like. Um, and obviously with myself, Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment box in the comment down below. Uh, and I hope to see you all on the next one. Um, and fingers crossed, some of the restrictions start easing off. So then if you do get to go to an exhibition, you'll be able to see some of my layouts and other things that uh, I'm involved in. Uh, I'll try and keep you videoed and Instagram and Facebook all up to date. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.